Hey guys, welcome. Andrew Douglas here. Today, I have basically run out of time to prepare for anything. So I've just decided what I would do is share with you the number one top secret, most incredible read manipulation trick in the world. Okay. And um, I'm just going to come out right here and tell you what the trick is. This trick will get your read sounding incredible, eh, maybe not every time, uh, but uh, it's the number one read manipulation trick that I know. And here's what it is. Just don't do it. Just say no. Uh, just say no to read manipulation tricks. So here I have, uh, and again, this is all kind of off the cuff here today, apologies, but here I have like all the cool read, uh, all the cool things that you could do to manipulate. The first thing you know, um, in my older age, I sat down and I kind of thought about it. Adrian Melvin sent me these beautiful new reads for my B-flat chanter. Um, and he is an expert and he made these reads and they're incredible and they're great. So for me to s start doing surgery on these reads just because they feel a little bit hard or maybe they're even too easy or maybe it's sharp on F or maybe it's not quite as vibrant as I'd like it to be on the top hand. Uh, for me to start to do surgery here, doesn't that seem kind of ill-advised? Um, and I'm a uh, fairly advanced player, and I definitely feel this way. And I definitely think that for beginners and intermediates, I think that would be a good starting point, right? Is to ask the question, why would I want to manipulate this? A lot of times when a read sounds, let's say, a little bit thin on the high hand, that's not because there's something wrong with the read. It could just be that our bagpipe needs to acclimatize needs to get a nice equilibrium level of moisture in order for that read to sound good. The same is true, um, you know, I have my screwdriver here, and this is imaginary, this is just a prop, but I could shave this down and turn this into an amazing reed poker, but why? Okay, if it is true that you get a dud, which by the way, is more and more rare as the world goes on, right? If it is true that you get a dud reed, the best possible trick that you could employ to get it to magically sound great is to just set it aside and then pick up the next read, which if that first one didn't sound good, the next one is almost certainly going to sound good. All right, the next thing I'd like to point out is uh, this applies to basically everything. So um, when it comes to licking a read, a lot of pipers will do that, okay? So a lot of pipers will take the read, and even, and even if it's already a great read, and they'll take it and they'll, they will apply moisture to it. I don't do that anymore. I uh, put the reed in the bagpipe and then I play the pipes for a few minutes knowing that it's not going to be, you know, at its full moisture level yet, knowing that it's not going to sound fantastic yet. And I just wait for it, you know, uh, five minutes of playing, then maybe let the bagpipe rest and let that moisture naturally soak in. And then suddenly I don't need to lick the reed every day. Now, I don't think the licking the reed is going to cause a ton of damage to the read or anything like that. But it does seem to me that if I could not touch it at all, that's going to bode a little bit better for the lifespan of the read uh, than slobbering on it every day. And again, I'm using the word slobbering for effect. And of course, you know, uh, I'm sure that bagpipers have a lot of success licking reads. But I guess the, the moral of today's quick video is that let's just not do that. The same goes with rubber bands. If your read is hard and you need to make it easier, the best possible trick you could use to solve that problem would be to set that read aside until you're ready to play that harder read, okay? And instead to select something that's right for you. And we recently did a video uh, showing how we use the Scott and the Brave test here around the dojo to kind of evaluate whether or not that read is the right strength for us, right? So this video, my number one read manipulation trick, okay? Which seems to be the right course of action for beginners and intermediates and even advanced players. One of the things that really uh, you might find interesting to know is that in, in, when we play an inverary, um, no one ever licks a reed or pinches a reed or touches a reed, really, particularly, I don't think. Uh, we do have some great reed makers in the band. So maybe every once in a while, there's some sort of trick that could be employed, but it's really, really rare. Because I think that at the high levels, the advanced players know that if a read is good, it's good. And if it's not good, you can horse around with manipulation and perhaps maybe get it to sound good. But the best strategy, right? You know, uh, the best strategy overall is to keep it simple and not go to town 
uh, and manipulating those reads. This reminds me of the idea of opportunity cost, right? Every second that you spend struggling with the read, manipulating it, trying to get it to work, uh, is time that's not spent working with a read that we know is good and allowing us to focus on other important things. All right, so that's my two cents on that one. I believe in a really, really super minimal hands-off approach to Chanter reads these days. Back in my youth, maybe that was a little bit different. Now I'm starting to get the gray hair and I'm thinking the minimalist strategy is the way to go. So uh, without further ado, it's now your turn to chime in. Tell me what you think about it. Um, and if you agree or if you think manipulation is the way to go. And that is gonna be my quick video this week. And uh, next week, I promise, actually, I don't promise I'll be more prepared because I'm going on a little vacation this weekend. And so maybe I'll be kind of not that prepared next week too, but uh, hopefully you still found this somewhat useful and maybe it gets the juices flowing for you on maybe just how a simpler approach with your chant to read might be the way to go. All right, that's it for this week. Take care. We'll see you next week.